and welcome to this worship service. We gather as a community, people coming from different walks of life, to seek a force that can meet us where we are. That force is a mystery. We call that force God. Let us come to God who understands every one of us and be who we can become together. Let us come to find ourselves again and get restored. <clears throat> Let us sing, pray, and fellowship together as we allow God to restore our beings. We also acknowledge that the mystery we call God is the host in this sacred place. This mystery has been here before all being. Generations of all people who have lived here were hosted and provided for by this mystery called God. Our being and that of all creation is found in God. Let us unite in our prayers, in praise, and in our song, expressing to God that which is in our innermost beings. We light these candles as the symbols of our faith in God and our relationship with each other. from Niverville. Do we have any announcements on our end? No, it's a beautiful start to July. And I just finished cleaning off my Saskatoon bush. My cherry tree is uh, just starting production. And I'm looking at the fields and they seem beautiful. But other than that, I guess we've got a quiet start to our week. I don't know anything about the picnic. <laughs> All right. I'm coming, I'm coming with information about a picnicker. Good morning, all. Uh, just a reminder that in two weeks' time, we will be having our picnic. This is a joint picnic with Steinbach and we will be meeting at the new Bothwell Park. We are, we are supplying the coffee, the beverages, um, and all are asked to bring your own lunch. Uh, but we are asking for cookies or muffins uh, to have before the service, um, or as we go into the service. Um, so if you can help out with that, that would be wonderful. Um, bring your lawn chairs, Your lunch, yes. All right, thank you. Over to sign back. <clears throat> Anyone would like to help with the garden tomorrow morning at nine? We're going to be weeding the garden. It might not be a lot of work, but we'll start tomorrow. <coughs> Mr.
many of you have probably heard of the death of Paul Campbell on Wednesday. Paul led worship here a number of times, and he was a friend to uh, several people from the congregation here and a friend to us. Uh, he dealt with cancer for a number of years, had lots of treatment, and always kind of bounced back. But um, he succumbed on Wednesday, but he had good times before that. He had an active weekend last weekend. He had recently made a trip to London, Ontario to attend a funeral for a friend. And on the weekend, he was doing things with his family, and he texted us to say they were going to head to the lake in a few days, and they'd stop in for a visit. So it's a blessing that he was able to um, live his life the way he wished to right until his last days. And there's still no word yet about a time for a funeral, but you can be checking obituaries or phoning somebody who, who might know. They, they still haven't set a time. But it will be at Trinity United Church in Winnipeg. Well, uh, we have heard the announcements, but uh, I just want to welcome you all. I, uh, I am glad to see so many verses this morning. And yeah, some people are never asked if I can recognize them, but uh, I would do so to Emerson at least. <laughs> so wonderful. And uh, we have this uh, very active, energetic, and lively, lovely young girl Emerson here today. For those of you in Niva who are familiar with uh, his smiles and giggles. And today it's our turn in Steinbeck. So welcome and thanks for coming. Well, I also want to recognize uh, uh, our, some of the visitors that we have here. I had an opportunity to talk to Jim and uh, Marianne. Uh, they are right there in uh, this side. Yes, they are visiting us from the United States and they are retired clergy in the United Methodist Church and they have chosen to be part of our worship this morning and thank you for coming whenever you're on vacation you're welcome here <laughs> thank you
Shall we pray? God of love and profound providence, we come to you this summer, se summer season. This should be time for relaxation and restoration, but our spirits still carry burdens, concerns, and worries of life. We yearn for calm lives, peaceful minds, satisfaction, and restful souls. May you offer us your healing love. Like an oasis in the desert, worship satisfies our restless souls. Today, help us find the good in this life, delighting in your presence and finding the hope you have placed in our innermost selves. Amen. This morning, my friends, as we worship, I have a poem to read for this theme time today. The author is anonymous and it reads, it's based on rest, rest. Are you very weary? Rest a little bit. In some quiet corner, fold your hands and see. Do not let the trials that have grieved you all the day haunt you this quiet corner. Drive them all away. Let your heart grow empty of every thought and kind. Let your heart grow of every thought and kind. That peace may hover round you and joy may fill your mind. Count up all your blessings, I'm sure. They are not few. That the dear Lord daily bestows on you. Soon you feel so rested. Glad you stopped a bit. In this quiet corner to fold your hands and see.
we'll take this moment to ponder and as we take this moment to ponder is we are pondering around the subject of rest so this summertime many of us are away right now as I speak and I know a number of us who are we have gone far east uh, up north, west, and south, and even far south. And that's good. They're having fun. And some have stayed indoors with family, and they're having fun too. The schools are closed. And for some of us, we have kids 24-7 um, at our watch. No time to leave them to the teachers. The kids are home for sure, and that's great. Even at this church, our administrative structures have taken a break in some way. And soon, me too, gonna be on vacation, taking a break, seeking a rest. Ironically, most of us and most people too seem to be overrun by their summer schedules. This scenario is not new and exclusive to us alone. Many of us will come back from the supposed rest. We come back tired. And I guess even some with jet lag. And then that begs your question for me, what does rest mean? Is it a physical activity or a state of the mind? Do we need to sleep or engage in sport or some form of hobby? Do we need to work a different job? What works well for you? It's your time to ponder about that. If you figure out what really restores you the best, take a moment and ponder on what kind of rest do you need now?
Good morning. The spiritual uh, reading is from Matthew 11, verses 16 to 19, and 28 to 30. To what can we compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We, we played the piper for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating or drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom proved right by her deeds. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will feel rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. reading is Rest by Laura Bing. If the mountain seems too big today, then climb a hill instead. If the morning brings you sadness, it's okay to stay in bed. If the day ahead seems heavy and your plans feel like a curse, there's no shame in rearranging. Don't make yourself feel worse. If the shower stings like needles and the bath feels like you're grown, if you haven't washed your hair in days, don't throw, throw away your curl. A day is not a lifetime. A rest is not defeat. Don't think of it as failure, just a quiet, kind retreat. It's okay to take a moment from any anxious, fractured mind. The world will not stop turning while you get realigned. The mountain will still be there when you want to try again. You can climb it in your own time. Just love yourself till then. Thank you, friends, and thanks to all the readers. This morning, as I take this moment to reflect, I'll be reflecting on the art of finding rest, the art of finding rest. Rest might mean peace of mind or quietness. It may mean as well support or an anchor. I lived in Newfoundland for some years and we often used to see the Coast Guard steer off 
from the ocean into a particular harbor of the day. And then when they get there, they drop their anchor and they take a rest. So rest might mean dropping an anchor and get support to stay still for the night. But sometimes rest is the most seductive force that takes over the mortals. It takes over humanity. When the day's work is done or is ended, lights are turned off, doors are locked, playgrounds are empty. We just leave by the playground. If you, if you go through our backyard, you go straight into the park. When it's 10 p.m., the park is empty. It might mean taking a break to rearrange. My friends, rest is not a defeat. Neither is it a failure. It is a kind of, and, 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 and maybe a quiet retreat. It's a strategy that preserves some fractured or bleeding minds, souls, and attitudes. Rest can preserve us from burnout. It renews our beings potentials and capabilities. It restores who we are. But we need to ask the question, what kind of rest do we need right now and at any particular point in time? Do you need an anchor or do we need an anchor to rest upon some form of support or do you need to quietly re-engage in nothingness or disengage in form of, I mean, from any activity? What kind of rest do we need now? What does your soul and your spirit need now? And what does your flesh need now? These are questions that I'm presenting to you as we all reflect on rest. Because we all deserve rest. And we all need rest. For every one of us to be anxious, to feel burdened, sometimes angry or tired, is part of this life in this world. Uh, it's normal, quote unquote. Every sky has a storm. Every work brings fatigue. Every road has accidents and every relationship has disappointments and I bet you know what I'm saying. However, the difference is Jesus invites us to a place where we can find strength in forgiveness, hope in struggles, love in discord, finding joy or happiness is achieved by people who are willing to travel within themselves. And I emphasize this. If we are willing to travel within ourselves, we can find that rest. That is transformation. That is learning to find satisfaction within or from within while crossing deserts of life. 
deserts of experiences and finding that satisfaction from within. To yearn for the inner peace is the solution to the insatiable desires of this world, of our hearts and of our egos. We need and we want a lot. We, we always see some that we do not have as better than what we have. It's the human nature. You know, the most beautiful, greatest thing, wonderful thing that we see and admire, the moment we have it as, our, as ours, we look for something else different. I tell you. And you look around, if you are honest to yourself, right here, travel within yourself to your closets. Check where you keep your purses and wallets. Check your jewelry right now. Just walk through where you keep all those stuff. For men, check your garages. How many tools? <laughs> but the more we have, the more we want. Finding peace from within is the gift that Jesus is offering us. Not from without. Our peace and joy and the happiness does not come from things. If things would bring everything, joy and happiness would only be for the rich. God has created us in a mystery. God is a mystery. We are created in God's image. We are a mystery. When we seek rest, it's so complicated. What gives somebody joy is the worst disappointment for the other. In families, those who like to watch televisions, um, some would, would love to see shows, others would love movies, and some in, in this area would be like, they go for jets, and others go for blue bombers, and those with uh, our better background would always be oilers, and some are jay, blue jays and maple leaves, and and some even the lightnings uh, that, that come from down south. Everybody loves something different. And do we know the real, the real reason why we love things differently? My friends, it's complex. Things may not give us what we want. There's one thing I learned from one of my closest friends. She said, because I used to, to laugh at them, that person, because they... They, wanted, they supported a particular team and when it was losing she didn't watch anything about it and she didn't want to hear anything about it and they said so what has happened to you and your team and, and she said I loved it for entertainment but when it's not entertaining me but bothering me and stressing me I shut off Things, systems, and structures do not offer everything that our souls and our bodies need. We need to go beyond that. We need to learn to travel beyond material, social, and other things that are around us. I can, I can tell you this, friends. It is important to know what we can and what we cannot do. But we need to be able to find beauty in song, that we, in a song that we sing, even with friends that hurt us. We need to feel safe in the world that's insecure, but knowing that God will go through this with us. 
The world is never going to be safe for you and for me. It's not going to be well every day. While it's good, it's going to be well some days, but some days are stormy and violent. But we need to know this. God is going to go through that with you and with me. We are not alone. I found out one of the greatest statements that we are in our creed. It's okay, friends. It is good and it is right to be able to find courage to say, I love you. I need your help. Or I'm not able to help. Or I don't know. Sometimes it's correct to say, I don't know, than to say, I think. And you say something strange that never works or even endangers somebody else. It's important to be able to say, I don't know. There's nothing wrong. It's not a crime, neither is it a sin. My friends, we need to be able to be who we are. And I can remind you what you all know, that human life is never perfect. And the environment will never be perfect either. Every situation in our life will be inadequate of our expectation. However, we must find satisfaction in the God in whom we can do all things. I will digress a little bit and remind you that joy and happiness do not come from a perfect life, perfect friends, perfect spouse, perfect health, or perfect economy, just to mention a few. They come from a disposition that is from within you where tears can water our patience, where failures become learning opportunities, where rejection can be a moment of reflection and bad rest can be a time for meditation. And any other setback become a reason for us to love, to love life and love it more and more and more. The story we, we, were, we, were, we were listening to, part of which states that this generation, that phrase, this generation, referring to the people who did not accept either John the Baptist or Jesus for whatever reason they gave, reminds me that when people do not like something, they will always find a reason not to like it. When people do not want to go to church, they will always get a good reason that might convince whoever asks them. If, if people do not like certain type of thing, clothes, food, or whatever, they will find a reason. For some, Jesus was a glutton. He ate a lot. He drank a lot. John the Baptist was too like holier than thou, lived in the desert out of Jordan, preaching repentance, you know, screaming and screeching, eating locusts and honey. He didn't have to enjoy all the cakes like we do in Manitoba and in America, I guess, and, uh, you know, he, he, he was somebody who focused on purity. They didn't like him too for that. If they didn't like John the Baptist, if they didn't like Jesus, if they didn't like the prophets, they didn't like Jeremiah, they never liked Isaiah, they didn't like Amos, they never liked, it was, it was, it was some way for justice, others way for purity, they never liked any of them. I don't think they will like you either. So, 
the disciples of Jesus would know that they will live in a world of slanderers. And you too will face slanders. They will rebuke you. They will ridicule you. They will demean you in many ways. If it's not for your faith or for your church, it's for your house and your family or your looks or where your background or where you come from or your economy. They have every reason. All day people have so many reasons not to like us. However, Jesus then emphasized to say, because we played, they did not dance, and we wailed, they did not mourn. They are, they are not responding positively to either moods. They are somewhere, somewhere. And the key thing is, and he said, it is important to know that wisdom is proved by her results. In other words, results come out of action. And I want to say this, friend, this few words, friends, before I sit down, shut my mouth. It is important, my friends, to know that whether we are quiet or we are talking, whether we are active or we are staying silent, seated, and never participating, people will always criticize whatever we do. So what do we do? Let's get up, take action, do whatever we can. If we need to take action for whatever good we believe is right, for humanity and for ourselves, let's do something. Let's take action. Neutrality is not right. Jesus detested it, didn't like it. Not, not mourning nor celebrating was not good either. So my friends, we need to take action. This generation, you and I, we need to take action because whatever we do, somebody else has a negative comment about you and about me and about a retired minister and about a young minister and about the best leader in our church and the worst leader in anywhere else and in the world that they have a negative statement. Friends, let's do something. Let's not stop doing what we need to do because we will be criticized. Because slanderers will live among us as long as we do. The last thing. I want us to remember this, friends. That rest is very healthy for the outer person and for the inner person. For our souls and for our minds. As we leave this place, Jesus is inviting you and I to say, come, come to me. I know you can go to the Caribbean for vacation or go to Texas or go to Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls, one of the favorite places for us. Uh, you can go to Newfoundland and go to see the beauty of that land, of the ocean, uh, the coves and the harbors and the bays they do have there. It's wonderful. I haven't gone north. I think I will do at some point to see the northern lights. And I, I do. Uh, I, I think I'll get there sometime. If we want to go there, let's go there. Let's go to Grand Beach. Let's go to St. Malo here. Let's go wherever we can go to find that kind of entertainment. But Jesus says, come to me. Here, you'll find rest. You will find rest. You need to rest a while. You need quiet time. You need to calm your emotions. Calm people. You know, calm people are, are always better at interaction. Those that have sat and watched the tri trials or court trials in particular, the best lawyers are always calm. In any argument, the, the most calm person has a higher chance of winning an argument. The logic in you and in me works well when we are calm. Quiet time fosters discipline for most of us, including 
those who train animals, people who train kids, they teach them to also have quiet time. People have come up with new ideas to do the same thing. Now they have what they call yoga. It's all about quiet time. People need time to slow down, take a deep breath. It's important. What do I say, friends? If you forget everything that I'm saying, remember this. Remember this. While Jesus is calling us to find rest, I want you to know that uh, your and my body, they restore themselves at best when they are still. So when we sleep, our bodies re recover, they heal themselves. And when we have deep sleep, psychologists say that's when our minds are healing themselves. Being still is very important, friends. So Jesus says, even after party, after golfing, skating, watching television shows, supporting jets or bombers, Jesus says, come to me. And I'm saying this, friends, as I am closing this. I remind you of uh, Augustine's statement when he says, we are a mystery that can only find rest in the mysterious force that created you. You created us pointing to God. I quote, you created us in such a way that our souls will never rest until they rest in you. End of quote. My friends, your soul, your being, your innermost being, your authentic self only finds rest when you get connected to your creator. And may God bless you and keep you and give you rest. Amen. The scripture teaches us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. This moment of offering reminds us of the blessings that we experience as we participate in this act. Offerings support ministry within the church and express our compassion and demonstrate our gratitude to God. Who is the provider? Let us offer our service, our talents, our time, and resources to God in God's ministry.
let us pray. With gratitude and reverence, we offer our lives for service and possessions for your ministry. May we find rest in the work we do and offerings we present through Jesus, your only child. Amen. Youth ministry isn't just about nurturing young people. It's about being led by their vision and their passion. As the United Church's team leader for faith formation and mission, Amy Crawford supports youth and young adult ministry. I caught up with her to talk about why this work is so important. So good to have you here, Amy. So I would love to start with just a bit of an overview in terms of what is the United Church of Canada doing when it comes to youth and young adults? I actually think that our youth ministry in the United Church in many ways has grown. We took it for granted that young people and children were going to be in the church and we can't take that for granted anymore. Um, they're here because they choose to be and they're here because they find a place for themselves here. One piece of the work that we're doing with um, a group of 40 interns is um, they're working on passion projects. And so they're taking some of the um, social justice uh, initiatives named in our strategic objectives, and they're developing projects to help teach the church about um, climate justice, about indigenous justice, about anti-racism and racial justice, and about LGBTQ2IS uh, and gender justice. Is there a, a, a face, a story that sort of stands out for you that um, of, of, a, of a young person whose life was changed by the gift of mission and service? I'm thinking of a young woman um, who I believe it was in 2011, went on one of our Youth for Peace trips to Israel and Palestine. It was not an easy experience for her. There were many times in her life and journey when mission and service supported her, and now she's giving back so much to the United Church and to uh, the church in the world. And if there was something you would want to say to the donors, if you had a donor here to Mission and Service that you'd want them to know, what would that be? Be generous. Um, it's going to better the lives of people in the church and beyond the church in Canada and beyond. And it's also going to make you feel so good. Generosity is a spiritual gift and it nurtures the giver as much as the receiver. So um, giving to mission and service is, is a joy. Your gift for mission and service will help inspire and support youth programming and engagement. Let us pray. O oh, wise and loving God, you know us better. We come to you this day with so many cares and concerns in our lives. We are concerned about our security, our health, our resources, and our families, to mention a few. We are always rushed. Our schedules and plans crowd us in. We are exhausted. Heal and restore us, O oh God. Help us to be the church in times of leisure as well as in times of work and stress. As we bring our cares in your and to your attention, grant us peace and eternal rest that proceeds from our experience in you. Strengthen and heal our sick. Come for those who grieve. Teach us to see the joyful opportunities that stretch before us. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us 
and who taught the disciples this prayer we are going to sing. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding fill your hearts and souls that you may find rest in this busy and volatile world. God's peace, love, and communion be yours now and forever. Amen. And thanks for coming. We would love to have you again and again and again. We love you all. Have a great week. There is coffee there behind. Have a cup of coffee and a little chat. Thanks.